the book Dogs uh, by Lorna and Raymond Coppinger or Coppinger. This one chapter is on the uh, on the domesticated dogs, so the household dogs, more more specifically the household dogs. And this chapter basically divides the relationship that we have with dogs and it gives you the two perspectives. So one, how does a dog actually benefit us? Just in general, how does the dog actually benefit us? What the statistics reveal is that in general, dogs don't really add a whole lot of benefit to our lives, you know, in general. Obviously your dog makes you feel good and your dog maybe does things for you and you go, that's nonsense, that, that dog is enhanced my life and I see the dog enhance my life on a regular basis or I see this dog enhance their owner's lives on a regular basis. But I'm talking as a whole, as a society, in general, there isn't a whole lot of benefit to us. Um, if you look at the number of, number of people that get bit on a yearly basis, the statistics are actually very high. I'm not even talking about the statistics back when the book was written. The statistics recent. And I believe it's something along the lines of every um, 60 seconds, more or less, somebody's getting bit. Uh, people are getting hospitalized every year due to dog bites. And again, you might look at that and go, well, that doesn't happen to me. My dog is not going to bite anybody. Again, just step out of that for a little bit and look at the bigger picture. You know, in general, the bigger picture, there's more of a hassle to humankind, right, to society from dogs than the benefits um, than the benefits we reap. The feeding pound per pound, okay, and the expense that a dog brings into the average life, to the average person, is quite a bit. And he talks about food, medical bills. Um, he potentially talks about the time and the effort that you have to put into these dogs. Uh, complaints, all things that can't even be measured, what benefit do we get out of that? In general, as a whole, it really gives you a, a good perspective as to the larger picture. And the author does say, I'm not saying that there is no benefit, you know, he says, if you look at the guide dogs for the blind people, that's a huge benefit. If you look at the uh, police dogs, it's a huge benefit. But he goes, it's only less than 1% of dogs in a particular category are actually helping blind people or are assisting people with other types of services. Less than 1%. In a large scale, only less than 1% of these dogs are doing things that we would consider useful. And of course, the population of dogs and pet dogs has increased dramatically since that book was written. You know, we're, we're going even as far as importing dogs from other countries. So rescues are blowing up. Um, it's just not, not uncommon to see and, um, you know, see or hear of dogs advertised. Go to Craigslist, you'll see that a lot. So the, the population of domesticated dogs here in the US at least has increased dramatically. So in the larger scale, <laughs> the benefit to humans, to the hassle to humans is, is a little bit off. Um, but you know, he's not an anti-dog person. He's, he's not saying dogs are terrible because then he flips to the other side and he goes, it's not that, that the dog is just reaping all the benefits of this relationship because that's not even happening. And then he talks about the other perspective, the other side, which is we are actually treating dogs horribly wrong. And the last part of that chapter, the back half of that chapter where he talks about that, I felt very refreshing because it wasn't as filtered 
it was very um, to the point, just flat out. You know, this is why people do this, which is something, you know, it's a style of, of writing or conveying a message that I really like. Just be, be right up front, be to the point. Don't beat around the bush. You don't have to be professional about it. And that's what he does with the back half of that chapter, which is he's basically to put it in a very short format. We treat our best friends in a very horrible manner from breeding uh, to the expectations that we have. You know, you have average pet people getting working dogs and a trait that would make a great working dog a good working dog like stamina and working behavior make horrible pets. So then people start breeding for pets, for pet quality. But you can't do that without affecting the body, right? The shape of the body. So they want to maintain the shape of the body, but they're trying to change the dog's demeanor through breeding. And it is inevitable, he says, that you're going to have health problems if you keep doing that. And then you look at the, uh, the dogs that get shown uh, for confirmation, the champions, and how this gets, you know, th this creates tighter and tighter bloodlines, which is basically inbreeding. You know, you're just getting tighter and tighter bloodlines, uh, more and more inbreeding. And then he says, you know, if you look at the golden retriever, you know, people will go, well, what kind of dog should I get? And they go, well, I should get a golden retriever because they're nice and this and that. And he says, that's nonsense. Um, you know, it, it's a joke. What we see golden retrievers as today, that was even, you know, back when they wrote the book. But even, even looking at it today, golden retrievers today, compared to what they were actually supposed to be, it's a cartoon, that's, that's the way he puts it. It's a cartoon of the original Golden Retriever. And some of the other things that we justify to say, well, you know, the dog looks like that because then we have a story as to why the dog has to look like that for confirmation. And he makes a lot of, a lot of good examples. You know, well, he'll go, the guardian dogs, you know, the. The livestock guardian dogs, they have to have hair covering their eyes because of this, this, and this. And he'll go, the dachshunds, they have to have this type of body because they're supposed to do this and this. And he goes, that's all nonsense. Most livestock guardian dogs are not going to do or encounter the obstacles that supposedly the breed standard is breeding for they're not gonna encounter those things. So all these things are just not practical for the dog, they're complete nonsense. They're excuse, excuses and justification for just breeding for looks. And he makes this point several times in, the, in that chapter where he goes, why are we getting dogs? You know, people will say, what kind of dog should I get? Really what people are saying is, what kind of dog would elevate my status? What kind of dog would do this for me? Uh, or what kind of dog would amuse me? And so we're not so concerned as, as a whole, right? Not you maybe, but as a whole, we're not so much interested in, in the dog's working behavior as much as we're interested in the dog's looks. And so that whole thing was very interesting. Again, a little bit of an aha moment where yeah, I mean, if, if you look at most people, if you look, hey, what do you think about dogs? I just had this conversation with a friend last night and, you know, he was telling me they do so much for us. And yes, a lot of dogs do a lot for us. Uh, I've been working with working dogs since I started training dogs back in 2009. That was my introduction to the dog world, working with police dogs, with contract working dogs, with protection dogs, with search and rescue dogs. So <clears throat> this is something that I, I became very aware of, that dogs can be great tools, can be very beneficial to us. But as a whole, that is only a very small percentage of benefit that we reap out of dogs, that we get out of dogs. For the most part, whether we like to realize it or not, it's more of a hassle. 
and we are equally, if not worse, to them. We are way, way worse to them. And the fact that we're just looking at a dog as a symbol, uh, as a status symbol, more than I want a dog to do this. So very just interesting chapter. Um, so far, I mean, that's towards the end of the book. So far, the book has been a great read. It's a little bit long, a little bit lengthy, a couple of chapters that I think could have gone without so much fluff. But this so far is the best chapter in the entire book. And I have like a few chapters left to go.